Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. President Obama signs 23 executive actions on gun control. The Boy Scouts win a victory in court for religious freedom. Pastor Scott Lively on trial in Massachusetts for free speech. And President Obama declares Religious Freedom Day? Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps on the air with the Pray in Jesus' Name show, the fastest half hour in Christian television, and we do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Let's get right to our first story. President Obama, and this is coming to us from Forbes.com and Fox News, have reported that President Obama has issued 23 executive actions for gun control. We're gonna talk about gun control today. Would Jesus support the Second Amendment of the US Constitution? Well, first the news. Here are five of the 23 executive actions. President Obama is issuing a presidential memorandum to require federal agencies to make available relevant data to the federal background check system. So you're gonna have background checks for gun buyers. Uh, The ninth item out of 23 is that he's going to issue another presidential memorandum to require federal law enforcement officials to trace guns recovered in criminal investigations. Wait a minute, well what if you sell one of your guns and it's used in a crime, they're gonna trace the gun back to its original owner, you're gonna be on the hook for this. Number 14 is he's gonna issue another directive that the Centers for Disease Control are, are now paid to research the causes and prevention of gun violence. Did you know they're co- gonna classify mental illness as a preventable disease so that they can stop you from owning guns, or maybe vice versa, your tax dollars are now gonna promote research that says if you own a gun, then you have mental illness. I'm concerned about that one. Uh, Number 16, he's gonna clarify that Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, does not prohibit your doctors from asking their patients about guns in their home. Your doctor is gonna be paid by President Obama under Obamacare to ask you about guns in your home? Gee, I wonder what, what the doctor would do with that. It is explained in item number 17. He's writing another letter to healthcare providers clarifying that no federal law prohibits your doctor from reporting threats of violence to law enforcement authorities. Okay, so now your doctor is the snitch paid by the Obamacare bill to not only ask you about your guns, but then to report it to the feds. Oh my gosh, this is what they're using Obamacare for? This, (laughs) I have a lot of red flags about this, but anyway, Why did President Obama bypass the US Congress and issue these executive actions? Mind you, they're not executive orders, but they have about the same weight in law as an executive order would. Well, I'm concerned about this. Here's a a statistic about the National Rifle Association. Before we talk about, let me give you my own background. As a former Navy chaplain, of course, I'm a lifelong military member, but uh, here's my Navy hat. I'm gonna show you the 10 Commandments badge that was given to me by Judge Roy Moore. I got my jump wings, I got the Christian cross, and this one's very special to me. This is an NRA Distinguished Expert Marksman badge. Did you know I was the high, captain of my high school rifle team? And when I was in high school, actually, I shot the target so precisely that they gave me a lifelong distinction as an NRA Distinguished Expert Marksman. And of course, I served in the military and I eventually became a chaplain, non-combatant, but uh, nonetheless, I believe, and I uh, report this new statistic about the National Rifle Association, did you know a 56% majority of voters now have a favorable opinion of the NRA, which is up significantly from 43% in March of 2000. Also, here's another question that was asked to American voters, and 58% of Americans said yes, 28% of Americans said no, that would there be less violent crime in the United States if more law-abiding people had guns than if guns were banned? Well, 58% of Americans said, let there be more guns for law-abiding citizens. Only 28% of Americans said, no, ban the guns. So there seems to be a growing consensus that the Second Amendment is a good thing. And I wonder, let's try to discern the spirits a little bit. What part, uh, is it the Holy Spirit and Jesus who would authorize and support your right to defend yourself using a weapon? Or is it the devil? Well, let's look at the scriptures. Here in uh, Luke chapter 22, Verse 35, Jesus said, he that has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy a sword. And the disciples said, Lord, look, here's two swords. And he said, that is enough. 
So here, Jesus advocated that the 12 disciples should sell their garments and buy two swords. Why would he do that? Because the Holy Spirit supports your right to defend yourself. I believe Jesus would support the Second Amendment, not to go out and buy AR-15 assault weapons, uh, not to obviously murder is wrong, uh, but to defend yourself in self-defense, Jesus had no problem with people buying swords. Let's uh, take a moment to pray about that. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray that the tyranny of the US government would not overreach their authority, would not prevent honest people and law-abiding citizens from defending themselves, and would uh, not over, overreach and abuse the law as President Obama seems to want to do. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you would defend your people in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's take a short break and we'll be right back. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps on the air with the Pray in Jesus Name show, and we do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus Name. Our next story comes from the Washington Times, an editorial column uh, with some colorful language, mind you, uh, but it's a great story. It's about the Boy Scouts who won a great victory in court after an 11 year battle on First Amendment grounds. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco has a well-earned reputation as the hippiest, dippiest, most rever reversed appellate court in the United States. But it's where the Pledge of Allegiance sometimes gets scrutinized for possible eradication, at least of the under God part. And every so often, however, they get it right. This time, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, most liberal court in America, got something right. On December 22nd, they issued a unanimous decision by the Ninth Circuit panel, and they reversed a federal district judge's order to evict the Boy Scouts from their longtime camp and local headquarters in San Diego's Balboa Park. The ruling came in a case filed by the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU in 2001, on behalf of a lesbian couple and an agnostic couple. Gee, the ACLU is signing up with the lesbians and agnostics to sue to stop the Christian Boy Scouts from using a public park. They basically accused the Boy Scouts of holding traditional values. The court initially erred in concluding that the Boy Scouts had barred the plaintiffs from using the property which gave the lesbian couple standing and the case went forward. However, the plaintiffs later admitted that they had not actually tried to use the facilities because they, quote, break out in hives if they're within a canoe's length of anyone wearing a neckerchief, end quote. Well, they didn't quite put it quite that way, of course, but that was the gist. And in a concurring opinion, the Ninth Circuit judge, Andrew Kleinfeld wrote this, Revulsion for a group so intense that one cannot bear to be on property they manage cannot, in a tolerant society, be deemed harm sufficiently concrete as to confer standing to sue." End quote. Well, God bless the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Here's the big story, right? The Boy Scouts, as a Christian organization, they take the pledge that they're gonna serve God and they do their, their, their oath to, to, and their duty to God. They're managing this campground and the lesbians and agnostics have such great hatred for the Boy Scout Christians that they can't bear to set foot on the public park because they feel like uh, their ha the hatred inside of them is so uh, causing revulsions that they don't wanna share public. So, so therefore they sued to kick the Boy Scouts out of the park. Christians are not allowed to use public land because they're too Christian. Now, wait a second. Let's. 
let's take a step back from this and let's discern the spirits. What is the demonic voice inside of the uh, homosexual activist that hates the Boy Scouts so much that they would try to sue them? I think it is explained in John 15 and verse 25. Let's read the scriptures together. John 15 and verse 25. This is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. In other words, there's a demonic voice of hatred that hates Jesus Christ so much. The devil is against the Holy Spirit and the spirit of Jesus. And that spirit of hatred is inside one party that's filing a lawsuit. And, and, and the court got it right. The Ninth Circuit Court judge said that there was so much revulsion inside of them that they hated the Boy Scouts so much that they wanted to sue. But that, does, that in itself, their hatred does not give them standing to sue. Let's take a look also at 1 John 2 and verse nine. The scripture says, he that says he is in the light but hates his brother is in the darkness even till now. Isn't that amazing that the homosexual community accuses the Christians of being so full of hate and yet they're the ones who are always attacking and persecuting and uh, in this case, they're actually suing the Boy Scouts to stop them as Christians from using public land. I don't think that's right. I think we need to uh, expose that for what it is. Would you take a moment to pray with me? Let's pray together for continued victory in our courts. Father in heaven, we pray your blessing upon the Boy Scouts Association that uh, we praise you, Father, for your wisdom that somehow spoke through these liberal judges to give victory and religious freedom and First Amendment rights to the Boy Scouts as they honor Jesus Christ on public property. Father, we pray against a demonic spirit of hatred and enmity and persecution, which would rise up inside the ACLU and these agnostic couples, homosexual couples that are suing because they're so full of revulsion and hatred and anger toward Jesus Christ. Father, we pray your blessing upon them that you would forgive their sins and convert them to faithfulness in Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, let's take a short break. When we come right back, we're gonna talk about Pastor Scott Lively, who's being sued in Massachusetts for his free speech. Come right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Chaplain Klingenschmidt. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps on the air with the Pray in Jesus' Name show. Let's get right to our next story. This comes to us from massresistance.org and our friends in Massachusetts, Christian community who is uh, trying to resist uh, the, the pressure in the liberal community up there. On Monday, January 7th, there was a courtroom trial and a motion to dismiss hearing began on the outrageous Crimes Against Humanity lawsuit, which is filed against Christian pastor Scott Lively by the George Soros backed homosexual group, Center for Constitutional Rights. So a homosexual group backed by George Soros is suing a Christian pastor, Scott Lively. What on earth did he do to deserve this lawsuit? Well, an overflow crowd of activists from both sides packed the federal district court in Springfield, Massachusetts. On August 8th, 2012, Lively's lawyers at Liberty Council also filed a 109 page motion to dismiss in response to the CCR's 61 page amended lawsuit against Pastor Scott Lively. And they're attempting to sue Pastor Lively for crimes against humanity, essentially to punish him for pro-family speeches he gave in Uganda in Africa several years ago about the homosexual movement there. Well, what happened in Africa? 
Let's take a look a little more in this story. Pastor Lively is accused of inciting murder, torture, and other civil rights violations in Uganda. They claim that Lively's meetings and conversation with church, with church leaders and public officials on pro-family issues in 2009 caused the Ugandan parliament to introduce a harsh anti-homosexuality law. Though the bill was never passed, they claimed it led to attacks on the homosexual community in Uganda. So the pastor went over there, gave some speeches. The Ugandan parliament tried to pass a bill and failed to pass a bill, but as a result, homosexuals were uh, threatened and uh, tortured, as so they claim. And this is all the pastor's fault, they say, because he went over there and gave these speeches. The suit is asking for compensatory damages, punitive damages, exemplary damages, attorney's fees, and a declaratory judgment that the defendant's conduct is in violation of the law of, of nations, as well as all such other and further relief that the court may deem just and proper. Essentially, they wanna bankrupt him and make an example of him for others. The lawsuit was prepared and filed by CCR on behalf of Sexual Minorities Uganda, a homosexual activist group. CCR describes itself as advancing and protecting the rights guaranteed by the US Constitution and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And Pastor Lively, in fact, did give a speech to the Ugandan parliament and a few months later in March 2010, Pastor Scott Lively then wrote a letter to the Uganda parliament reiterating his desire to stop the legislation that they were introducing. This harsh legislation, by the way, which never did pass the Ugandan parliament, uh, supposedly encouraged the death penalty for homosexuality. But Pastor Lively didn't want that. He wrote to them and said, don't have a, a harsh penalty, instead promote reparative therapy and consider reparative therapy. So Pastor Lively, uh, after he advised them not to pass the harsh bill, in fact, they voted against it, and they followed the pastor's advice for a more lenient bill. But here's my question. If the pastor went over to Uganda, advocated against harsh penalties for homosexuality, said it's okay, we should if, you know, offer them therapy, don't offer them punishment, and then the parliament did not pass the death penalty, did not pass uh, any harsh penalties, how can the pastor now, after advocating the liberal position, now be accused of inciting murder, torture, and other civil rights violations in Uganda? Uh, this is not right. Uh, let's discern the spirits a little bit and consider, is it the Holy Spirit in Pastor Sp Scott Lively or is it a demonic voice that it, what, who's suing who and, and which one is advocating harsh penalties and which one is lying in a court now? Uh, I wanna show you this wanted poster, by the way. Uh, they accuse us and they accuse Pastor Scott Lively of, of hateful speech. He's being tried for hate speech, no doubt. And the judge is laughing about this. The judge is saying that there's really no actionable offense here. But the homosexual community are the ones who are guilty of hate speech, why? Look at these wanted posters they're putting up. Not only are they suing him in court, trying to steal his money, trying to bankrupt him, but they're putting up wanted posters, wanted Scott Lively for inciting the genocide of 12 million Americans? Okay, now if the homosexual community is the one putting up the wanted posters, how can they not be the ones that are influenced by a demonic voice. Let's look at the scriptures in Matthew chapter 10, verses 17 to 20. It says this, beware of men, they will deliver you up to the councils, they will scourge you, and you'll be brought before governors and kings for my sake. Take no thought of how you shall speak, for it is not you that speak, but the Holy Spirit or your Father, which speaks in you. Did you know the Holy Spirit is speaking through Pastor Scott Lively? He's been delivered up to the, the people for trial, but we're gonna pray for him right now. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you will honor Pastor Scott Lively, find him not guilty in this trial, stop his persecutors, and give him freedom in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, this is Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna thank you for participating and watching this important message today about defending religious liberty. If there's anything our message proves is that we can make a difference. If we will rise up together as the Church of Jesus Christ, we do not need to be ashamed of the name of Jesus. 
I need you to participate today in one of four ways. Please visit our website at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign our free petitions to defend religious liberty. Number two, I need you to call us at 866-Obey-God and we, you can sign what they call a fax petition. You don't have to know how to operate a fax machine, but for a nominal fee, we will fax your petition to all 100 senators or all 535 congressmen to defend the right to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, please purchase our DVDs and CDs with important teachings about defending religious liberty around the country. And number four, please donate. These rallies cost us thousands of dollars and we need your donations to stay on the air. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and do what you can to help. Welcome back, God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps with the Pray in Jesus Name show. Let's get right to our next story. LifeNews.com is reporting that President Obama has declared Religious Freedom Day even as his administration denies religious freedom for Christians. President Barack Obama declared Religious Freedom Day as his administration is working overtime to deny religious freedom to pro-life Americans who do not want their companies, schools, or businesses to pay for drugs that may cause abortions. While the Obama administration is furiously working to push the HHS mandate of Obamacare on religious employers, President Obama personally issued a proclamation calling religious freedom sacred. And here's what he said. Foremost among the rights Americans hold sacred is the freedom to worship as we choose. The ironic proclamation reads, today we celebrate one of our nation's first laws to protect that right, the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom written by Thomas Jefferson and guided through the Virginia legislature by James Madison. The statute affirms that Almighty God hath created the mind free and that all men shall be free to profess their opinions in matters of religion. Years later, our founders looked to the statute as a model when they enshrined the principle of religious liberty in the Bill of Rights. But uh, these days, Alliance Defending Freedom, Senior Legal Counsel Matt Bowman sent an email to Life News regarding the decision of the Obama administration to try to continue to force a Bible publisher to act contrary to its religious beliefs in Tyndall House Publishers versus Sibelius. Did you know the Bible publisher is suing the Obamacare bill? Because why? Because they're forced to pay for abortion pills for their employers, for their employees. Uh, the lawyer said this, Bible publishers should be free to do business according to the book that they publish. Regrettably, the Obama administration does not want religious freedom to stand in the way of impo imposing Obamacare. The district court rightly halted Obamacare's abortion pill mandate against Tyndall House, but sadly, the administration continues to argue that a Bible publisher isn't religious enough to qualify as a religious employer. For the government to say that a Bible publisher isn't religious is startling. We will continue to argue on appeal that the administration cannot disregard the Constitution's protection of religious freedom to achieve certain political purposes. So that's the news. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits a little bit. What is the voice in President Obama's mind that is declaring religious freedom as an American ideal? Is that the Holy Spirit or is that a demonic voice? Obviously, I think that's the Holy Spirit. It's possible that even our liberal left-wing president is sometimes influenced by the Holy Spirit to do the right thing, like he did in praising religious freedom. But here's the problem. In that, in that same person inside of President Obama's complex inner workings, there is also a demonic voice that is arguing in a federal court that a Bible publisher like Tyndall House should not have the right to stop paying for abortion pills. Obamacare mandates that Christian employers, even from nonprofits sometimes, even churches maybe, uh, even Catholic hospitals or Christian uh, employers have to pay for abortion pills for their employees, have to provide these abortion pills to kill innocent children in the womb. Well, when a Christian Bible publisher like Tyndall House objected and they filed a lawsuit, did Obama say, oh, well, religious freedom is a good idea. Maybe we should honor them or give them an exception? No, instead, he defended in court how they must pay for abortion pills. That's a demonic voice that is influencing our president. I'm very concerned about this. Uh, you know, it's one thing to say that we have religious freedom here in America. 
It's another thing for the government to impose tyranny and act against the interests of religious freedom for individual citizens who band together like Hobby, the Hobby Lobby Corporation, uh, like uh, the Christians construction firm in Illinois who had to sue, and like Tyndall House publishers. Do you know there are 40 lawsuits against Obamacare now because Christian groups do not want to be forced to pay for abortion pills the way that they are being. Let's take a look at the scriptures here, which confirms, I believe, our discernment of the spirits. In Matthew 23 and verse three, Jesus says this, about the government of his day, but it's still applicable today. You must obey them and do everything they tell you to do, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Doesn't this sum up President Obama right here? He's proclaiming religious freedom day at the same time he's opposing actual religious freedom for Christians. Let's take a moment and pray in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you would give liberty to the captives, that you would set free the oppressed and stop the oppressor and give true religious freedom, not just lip service, but actual religious freedom to Christian Americans so they will not have to fund the, the abortion and killing of innocent children with our own private dollars as well as with our tax dollars. God, stop the hypocrisy and give us true religious freedom from uh, the president all the way down to the lowest citizen. Father, I pray that America would be a place where the Christian ideal of liberty would be preserved in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you for joining us in prayer. Stay tuned for valuable info about partnering with Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I wanna give you a preview of our next show. We're gonna talk about four important stories and we're gonna pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Number one, a congresswoman is introducing a bill to stop your federal tax dollars from being spent on abortion. Number two, a court dismisses charges against a street preacher in Tempe, Arizona, arrested for preaching on a public sidewalk. Number three, the US military is being forced to embrace Buddhism as an Eastern religion. Number four, the Seattle police are stopping a church from feeding homeless people in a public park. These are important issues that we're concerned about, and I wanna encourage you to reach out to us. Do you have any prayer requests? I'd like you to visit PrayInJesusName.org and contact us through the website and send us your prayer requests so that we can stand with you. Would you take a moment to pray with me? Father in heaven, I ask your blessing on every viewer of this show, and I ask that we would stand together, that together we would rise up and create a, a, a cacophony of prayer with the angels in heaven, that you, Father God, would be moved, that your heart would be moved in Jesus' name to help us redeem the culture. Father, bless every viewer today. Bless uh, the production, the distribution, uh, the donations, everybody, uh, the website, everybody who participates and sends our petitions to Washington. And ultimately, Father, we join together in agreement and prayer to send our petitions to you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's PrayInJesusName.org.